So I have a new toy this week. Check this out. So this is the nightcap dial indicator holder. I got it on eBay. The guy that um, sold it to me was really nice. Um, I asked him a question about it. My main concern was, you know, since your spindle can turn in high gear pretty easily, I wasn't sure if I was gonna run into issues, you know, trying to put pressure on the, the dial test indicator and have it have the spindle turn and have the measurement be off. So he responded telling me that it shouldn't be an issue, but it hasn't been tested, I think, at that point. I think they did it on a 770 and it was okay. So they said if I had any issues with it, um, let them know and they'd, they'd figure out a solution. They even went as far as to say if the, they couldn't figure out you know, a fix, if I was not satisfied for any reason, that they would send a shipping label and I could return it. So um, I thought that was above and beyond for sure. And, uh, and so yeah, I went ahead, pulled the trigger, got this guy. And while I was at it, I splurged a little bit and got the best test. Um, yeah, a little brown and sharp guy. So a little talk about dial indicators. I bought this one new. And as far as I've been able to read online, it's kind of a middle of the road, pretty good, reliable test indicator. Um, I saw a couple of these on the classifieds for like 60 to 80 bucks used, but I've never owned one. I've never really used one in depth. And so my thought was I can spend 60 or $80 on one and not really know what to look for in one. Um, the only thing I read online was, you know, if they're sticking when you go to move them, they're bad. But aside from that, I didn't know if I was buying a piece of junk. So I figured at this point, since I'm kind of new still, it was better just to spend $200 on a good one than $60 or $80 on a bad one and end up having to spend that $200 later anyway. So super happy with it. Um, does what it should do. Reads to five ten thousandths um, per tick. So that's pretty good. Uh, this one's got the 30 thou from end to end sweep. Um, yeah, so it looks like it'll work well for me. So to use this little guy, all you've got to do is slide on your little um, dovetails and then clamp that down. So this um, dial test indicator holder has a fancy little custom machined um, top portion of it so that it can fit into the um, TTS system. So yeah, you can just plop that into your collet and snug it up. Since I'm not going to be spinning the spindle, you don't really have to go crazy. And I guess I need to actually turn on my machine for this part. All right. See so yeah, how you just loosen one knob, it loosens up all the little joints. Looks like I actually went down a little bit too far to make this thing work nicely. Go like right there. There we go. And so you can see, you can just kind of plop her down wherever. Okay, so it's reading something. That's all that matters. All right, so we got the dial indicator on there and it's reading, what are we at here? We're actually just past like, I'd call it negative two, I guess you could say, two on the left. And I take that back, that's actually a little over one thou, because that's the big tick, and it's five tenths in between. So now, I've actually already dialed this vice in, so I'm gonna cheat, but it shouldn't have moved, so we'll see. So you can see it kinda has a little jitter to it, but. So we we're just under one thou on there. And right now when I look at it, it's like negative one and a half thou. So we are less than five tenths across here. Yeah, and it's repeatable, it's right back to where it was. So overall, I think that this is a pretty nice little piece. You saw right there, it works for its intended job. 
Um, I know there's other things that you can use a dial indicator for, not just sweeping in a vise. Um, you can use it to find centers of holes and that sort of thing, but it looks like it's going to work. Um, I guess this is me wiggling the spindle right there. You can see the dial moving. Maybe you can just a little bit as I wiggle it back and forth, but it's pretty noticeable. So I think I would notice that if the spindle ever actually happened to turn while I was just sweeping it. But the difference in the amount of force that it takes to move that versus that little tiny plunger at the bottom is just huge. A few observations about this tool. Um, number one, right when I took it out of the package, which it came in, forgive my gorilla opening skills, but it came in a package. Here it is. Um, basically just a plastic baggy, stapled shut. Um, not bad, but I'm not sure if it was during packaging or just the pieces that the guy's putting together, but like I had some scratches on the actual body of the tool itself. So I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's just one of those things like you open it up and it's like, meh, you know, it's got some scratches in it. I'll probably put a ding or two in it myself. So not a big deal. Uh, also, I noticed that this anodizing over here is a slightly different color than this anodizing over here. So my assumption based on that is that um, the, man, the maker is probably outsourcing or you know found from here on the components that he needed to make this part and he's making these ones and having them anodized himself. Which no problem with that. Um, it works. Price point was like spot on. It was $39 regular and right now, I don't know how long um, he's going to do it, but right now it's 15% off. So we're talking, I paid like $33 for it and that included shipping. So for a price point that low, like I'm definitely willing to overlook a few scratches, you know, minor things at that point, it's, you know, if the thing works, then it's worth the money. Um, I honestly think they could get away with charging a little bit more if they got the quality up to where, you know, you weren't getting, you know, nicks and scratches and everything. And so I think it was a good deal. Um, I'm super happy with the product. So if you want to check out a little bit more about this, I've got a link to the eBay listing in the description below. I always think it's cool to support the folks that are making parts specifically for our Tormox. So that's it for this week. I'll see you later.